Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive review on all of the ColourPop eyeshadow singles that I have. So, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of different formulas, a lot of different shades. We have shimmers, we have satins, we have mattes. We have a lot to go through. So we are gonna swatch every single shade for you guys. We are gonna talk through all of them as far as pigmentation, blendability, the actual color and what I think of it, all of those details. I also show you a really quick tutorial on this eyeshadow look right here using these eyeshadows because I wanted you to be able to see how they actually performed on my lid. Well, some of them. Obviously, I couldn't use every single one of these on my lid today, but I wanted you guys to get an idea of how they performed on the lid as well as how they actually swatched on my arm. So we're gonna to talk through all of that and I really wanted to get this video up because I know that ColourPop frequently runs their BOGO eyeshadow palette deal. It might just be a permanent offer that they have now where you get a really good deal on creating either a 12 color eyeshadow palette or a 24 color eyeshadow palette or some combo with cheat colors and I clearly have a lot of them and in collecting these shadows I have found that a lot of them do not look exactly how they look online and the color in person when I actually have the eyeshadow looks very different from the photo that's on their website. So I wanted to get this up to hopefully help any of you that have experienced that with ColourPop in the past and are a little bit nervous and want to know what the true color looks like. So that's what this video is. If you want to see that we will jump right into it but before we do if you could please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and also click on that notification bell that would really help me out because I post three to four new videos every single week for you guys and make sure to go follow me on Instagram as well because I post a lot of updates for you guys there on products that I talk about on this YouTube channel. I do a little mini blog post to my Instagram story each week, so I have a lot of content for you guys there as well. Alrighty, I think that's everything, so let's jump right into it. Okay, lids are primed, locked, and loaded with my MAC Soft Ochre Pro Longwear Paint Pot. I've pretty much used this as my eyelid primer in like every tutorial lately. I also love the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, but I ran out of that and haven't repurchased yet. So, I mean, it's a great one. Can't go wrong. Okay, so let's first go in with a light transition shade. And for that, I'm going to use the shade Issues right here. This is just like a light peachy peach. I'm going in with that on my Sigma E40, just gonna put that all over the crease area. Okay, I love that shade for a transition color. That is like perfect. Okay, the next shade I'm gonna go in with is this right here and it's called Zing and I'm gonna pick that up on my Morphe M433 and just focus this on the outer half of my crease. All right, next I am going to deepen that up even further. So I'm gonna pick up the shade Wake Up Call right here. This is just a brown that's a little bit more neutral and like a step deeper. And I'm going to pick that up on my Jaclyn Hill Morphe brush, the JH37. Okay, and then one more shade in that outer corner area. I'm just gonna use the same brush and pick up this shade right here, which is called Conundrum. Why is it hard on my own? 
Okay, for the shimmery shade on my lid, I really want to use this one, which I haven't used before, and that one is called So Good. I'm just gonna use one of my Urban Decay Naked brushes. This is from the Naked 3 palette, so any synthetic brush like that will work. And then I am going to pick that up with some MAC Fixed Plus. Wow, that has a ton of fallout. Very chunky. That may be a pressed glitter. Okay, the last shade I'm gonna go in with before I do some blending and clean this up is this shade right here. It's called What's Your Sign? And I'm gonna use this to clean up under the brow bone area, add a little bit of brightness there with my Sigma E59 brush. Okay, I love how this eyeshadow look turned out so far. It's just a really nice, soft, peachy kind of glam. So I think that's really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my face makeup off camera. I just wanted to show you guys how those shadows performed and then we will come back and do swatches and talk through all of the shadows individually. And we're back like three hours later. So my makeup has been done for a long time at this point. I will list everything that I used for my full face in the description box below in case you're interested, but I'm sure some of you are already wondering what my lipstick shade is. It's actually a Revlon lipstick in the shade 755 Bear It All. And I actually showed this in a recent lip swatch video that I did where I did like a drugstore lipstick showdown. So I will put a card for that right here. I believe that that'll be up first. I think so. So go check that out if you're interested. But yes, everything else is listed in the description box below and it's been it's been sitting on my skin for a while. But long story short, I decided to go paint my nails so that you guys didn't have to stare at my destroyed nails while I held up eyeshadows for you guys. And then that meant that I needed to let them dry, which took a long time. So <laughs> I've had like dip powder and acrylics and a variety of things on my nails for probably the past few months at this point. And I already just have really thin, flimsy nails to begin with so whenever I do that my nails get destroyed like no matter what so I hope that wasn't too distracting while I was putting on my eyeshadow but I was like oh my gosh how could I even think that that's okay for people to look at so I painted them okay let's go ahead and start off with the swatches so we're gonna start with this palette right here this has the majority of my shadows these are all of my matte shadows that are lighter and medium some of the deep matte shadows and then the rest of the deep dark ones are in this palette which we will do set second. So I was going to swatch these on my palm for you guys, which I normally like to do whenever I'm swatching eyeshadows. I just feel like it allows the true color to show up better. But a lot of these shades on the top row here are very, very light in color and just don't show up well on the palm of my hand. I was already playing around with them and I was like, ugh, you can't really see those. So for the sake of consistency, I'm going to swatch all of them on my arm. Um, I think just because this part of my arm is so pasty, you can just see them better. So, okay, let's just get right into it. Here we have the first row. Sorry, these are just like terribly spaced. I clearly don't do arm swatches like this often. So right here, you really can't see it. Wait, is that where it is or is it up here? Yeah, it's right here. You really can't see that, but that is Hear Me Out, What's Your Sign, Issues, Running Late, Go With The Flow, Zing, and Wake Up Call. So those all swatched really nicely. Obviously you can see some shades better than the others because they're just brighter shades or deeper shades. But I think for the purpose of all of those being transition type shades or shades that you would use to highlight the brow bone, they're all perfect. Like I love that level of pigmentation for shades like that. I will say my favorite shades out of this whole row are definitely these two right here. So Zing and Wake Up Call. They definitely are different enough to where you can use both in your collection. This one has a little bit more of an orangey undertone. This one has a little bit more of a cool undertone, but both are really pretty and muted and wearable enough to where they can be really versatile and you can use them in a lot of different looks. So I love those. They also are just like nice medium toned browns. Not too light, not too dark. They're just perfect for building up color. I also do really like these two shades right here. They're very different, so I think you could definitely use both in your collection as well. 
Hear Me Out is definitely a true matte cream shade, so it's perfect for highlighting the brow bone, or you could lay that down all over the lid if you like that brighter matte lid effect. That would be really pretty for that. What's Yo Sign right here actually has little flecks of glitter throughout, so let me see if we can get that to focus but it does have little flecks of glitter. However, it still is a matte formulation. So the glitter just gives it kind of a dimensional effect on the eye, which actually would be really, really pretty all over the lid or underneath the brow bone, but it doesn't look like you have a glitter eyeshadow on. It doesn't have a shimmery foiled finish to it. It's still a matte. And this one also has a bit of a yellow undertone when you compare it to Hear Me Out. So you can see they're definitely different. They serve two different purposes in an eyeshadow collection. Do you absolutely need both? No, but you could have both for sure and they're not dupes. And then as far as these shades in the center, I do like them for transition shades. They're definitely light enough and they're not too neon or bold to where you can't use them to lay down on your crease as the first color that you use. But I do wish that ColourPop had shades that were this light, but more brown. So this kind of vibe, but even a little bit lighter. That would be, that would be perfect. That's kind of what I'm missing from this collection is just transition shades that are the first shades you use all over your crease that are light neutral browns. Definitely am missing that. They have those medium toned browns and the deeper ones and the dark ones. So while these are really pretty, they obviously do lean very peachy pink and very orange. So if you're somebody that just goes for more wearable neutral brown type looks and that's kind of all you do, you wouldn't really have use for shades like this in your collection. Obviously I did use this one on my lid today and this is definitely still a soft wearable glam, but it for sure has that peachy undertone going on. So if you don't like that, I didn't really see anything else on their site that would give you what you would need in that sense as far as just like light neutral browns. But other than that, I think all of those are really good shadows and it's just going to depend on what you're looking for in your collection and what type of eyeshadow colors you prefer. Okay, so here we have Lay Low, Bel Air, Say I Do, Pretty Please, Made to Last, and Sidetracked. So a couple of these I had a harder time swatching. This one right here, Bel Air, definitely didn't swatch as pigmented as the others. You guys saw I went over that a couple times and then I realized I wasn't using my pointer finger for that. So at the very end, I tried to go back over it. Still not the most pigmented, but it's a really pretty shade and we don't need every single shade to be intensely pigmented. Like something that's buildable like this is really pretty and really usable. And then this one right here, I had a little bit more trouble with as well, that sidetracked, but that could have just been the way that I was swatching it. It's really pretty and it looks great now. So I really enjoy most of this row except for these two shades right here. So these are two shades that I thought looked much more wearable online and when I got them in person, I was like, did I order that? Like, they just don't look quite the same on ColourPop's website. So this is a very, very bright peachy color, kind of in this family, but even more peachy pink, even brighter, even bolder. It's swatched really nicely, so if you like a color like that, it's super pretty. I just don't really wear eyeshadow like that on my lids. Like I said, I'm much more of a wearable soft glam kind of girl. This color right here, Say I Do, it's definitely pretty, but it's much more pink. Like it's much more true Barbie pink than I thought it would be based on the photos on the site. So I was hoping that would be a little bit more wearable. Again, it's pretty if you are going for that, but I wasn't really going for that. And then the rest of those shades are really pretty. Again, Bel Air didn't swatch amazingly, but that's one that I have used on my lids for a while and I like the pigmentation of that. Again, it's just blendable. This shade right here at the very end called Sidetracked also has glitters throughout it. I, again, I don't know if any of that's gonna pick up. I won't find out until I start editing this, but that has like little golden glitter flecks in it, which I think are really pretty. Sometimes when eyeshadows that are matte just have those flecks of glitter, it actually just helps them to be more pigmented and laid down more intensely. You know what I mean? It just gives it a little bit of grip. So I think that that swatched really pretty. Again, it's definitely a true matte and not something that shows up glittery, but super, super pretty. So I think that one might be my favorite. I loved that shade. This one's really good too, made to last. It's definitely just a different undertone than this, but good. Okay, here we have In Frequency, Labyrinth, TBH, Conundrum, 
Chic Happens, and Mariposa. So all of these swatched well, except for these two right here. So Chic Happens and Conundrum, I had to work with a little bit. These ones were very, very creamy and pigmented. There definitely was a difference in texture and feeling those. They just were much softer and just, you know, they felt more pigmented. So all of these shades are really unique and I really like all of them, honestly. This one is definitely very orangey, so if you like an orangey, golden, bronze-toned eyeshadow look, then that would be perfect for you to have. Not the most neutral wearable shade, but definitely something that can fit in your collection if you're that type of makeup lover. These two shades right here I thought swatched beautifully. Those are great shadows. This one, I don't know that, I mean, I'll have to play around with it more. That's a newer shadow for me. And same type of thing, it has those little glitters in there. So we can see, I just don't think that you need to have both of these in your collection, even though that does have glitters and it's a little bit different. They, I mean, they look almost identical. So I don't think you need both. This, it's not the most amazing matte brown ever, but it's a pretty color. Okay, so here we have Take the Lead, Top Notch, Pretty Cruel, Good Thing, Finesse, and Facet. So this you saw did not swatch well at all. Um, the rest of these swatched very well. They're very pigmented. This one, I think that was just my issue at first, the way that I swatched that, because the second time, like, that looks very nice and pigmented. So these are all just great next level shades as far as deepening up the crease area. I really like all of these, except for Take the Lead right here. I also just don't really understand the undertone of this. It's like a green gray like i just don't i don't know it's not a shade i personally ever wear myself those kinds of shades just are not very flattering to me on the lid and especially with my skin tone um so that one i would say i don't recommend the rest were so pretty i just love these rich colors this one has glitters in it too Ooh, that one i can see is picking up on camera at least I love that one. That is so pretty. And these are just really nice, rich, earthy tones. So I really enjoy everything except this one. <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to the second palette that I have. So this has all of my shimmery shades and then these deep mattes right here. Okay, here we have Now and Zen with a Z, not then. Let me explain, Liar Liar, Nectar, Ringer, and Monarch. So, oh, these are all so beautiful. Oh my goodness, I love those. These are all essentially the same finish except for Monarch right here. These are all much more metallics. This one is more of like a satin sheeny shade, which I actually think is really pretty, and I don't have anything like that in my eyeshadow collection anymore. I feel like that was very much a MAC eyeshadow thing back in the day, and I just don't have any other shades like that. So that's definitely pretty. I just, oh my gosh, you guys, I love this whole row. They all are unique, and they all do something a little bit different for the lid. So I personally think you can use all of them in your collection. I will say this one, Nectar, right here is probably the least subtle out of all of them. It definitely has more of that purpley tint to it, but it looks more purple in the pan than it actually swatches out. So I was a little bit worried about that being a little too lilac, but I think it's so pretty. So I love all of those. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here we have Comeback Kid. This one I was having a harder time with, honestly, because I've used it so many times. Like, I've had this in my collection for a long time. I've gone in with a lot of Fix Plus on that shadow, so I apologize. It's just not showing up the best, but it shows up beautifully on my lid. I believe this is the shade that I used on my lid in my most recent Get Ready With Me. I'll put a card for that here, but I am obsessed with this shade. This just does not do it justice. It's such a gorgeous pinky gold. Then we have So Good, which is the one I put on my lid. That is so good. Over It, Snake Eyes, and Misty. So again, these all swatched beautifully. This is one of the ones that I will say definitely, again, showed up different in person than it looked online. 
You can see here, it definitely is just like a true metallic pink and it's really pretty, but it didn't look as pink like that online. I feel like it's not even showing up very well in the viewfinder. It's just a deeper, more silvery pink than I was anticipating. So it's still pretty, but just up to you if that's a shade that you would actually wear. And this shade Snake Eyes right here is really unique. It's definitely like a mix between a chrome and a purple, but I think it's beautiful. So I actually love that. Also, I apologize for the changes in lighting. Sun's going behind the clouds. Okay, let's do the last row here, which is the rest of my mats. Okay, we have Feathered, I See You, Cloud Nine, and let's do it. So this black is amazing, holy crap. These all swatched a little bit iffy. They looked a little bit patchy, but but that could just be because they're such deep dark shades that they really do show up better when you're using a makeup brush. So I will see on those as far as like use and how they perform on the lid moving forward. I don't know that I can give my full sign off on those at this point, but I do think if you're looking for deep dark shades, like it's worth trying because they're so affordable, but this black definitely swatched nicely. Okay, so final overall thoughts on these ColourPop eyeshadow singles. So I don't know that I can give an overall universal thought because some of them definitely performed differently. Some of them definitely weren't as pigmented as others, which is pretty consistent with any other brand. You're not gonna get every single shadow to perform the exact same way. But I think overall, I would say I really, really, really like these shadows. I've used many of them for a long time at this point. I always have a good experience with them. I always think they look pretty on my eyes and the look turns out well and they last for a long time. So I've never really had an issue with ColourPop shadows aside from the fact that they don't really match up to their photos online all the time, which is definitely just frustrating because you wanna be able to get as good of an idea as you can of what you're purchasing before you actually purchase it, of course. And I know that cosmetics can be tricky to photograph because lighting definitely distorts the true color, but this is an issue that I've actually had with ColourPop many times at this point, whether that be eyeshadows or lipsticks or anything like that where I will order something online and I will get it in person and I have to go back and check online to make sure that I ordered the right thing or that they sent me the right thing because it looks that different from the photo. So I do wish that they improved that a little bit and just had photos that were a little bit more representative of the true color because I've been thrown off a time or two. And I know I'm not the only one because I've had friends say that to me as well. So you guys will have to let me know if you've had that experience with ColourPop too. But otherwise, I think these shadows are really pretty. I love the range that I have and all the different shades that I have in my collection. I think we have a really good variety of shades and they're just, I really like them all. I honestly think that these ColourPop singles are probably the best performing single eyeshadows that are the most affordable in the market right now. Like I'm trying to think of others. I used to think that that was Makeup Geek, but I'm pretty sure each individual shadow from Makeup Geek is $5. So if you're trying to build a palette that is this big and every single shadow is $5, that's not an affordable palette anymore, unfortunately. And I was saying this to my friends the other day, but if MAC reformulated their eyeshadows, they would be, they would be amazing. I know that those are definitely pricier too, but they just are not as good as these ColourPop shadows even. They're not very pigmented. The payoff just isn't there, but the colors and the undertones are perfect. They are everything. They're so wearable. Like that is exactly what I'm looking for, but the quality doesn't justify the price in that case. So I really do think ColourPop is going to be your best bet. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below if you have played around with their single shadows. What are some shades that you love? Is there anything that I didn't mention that you think falls into that wearable, more neutral category that I should purchase? Or let me know which of the shadows that I swatched here today you thought were the prettiest and you want to buy after watching this video. So that's everything that I have to say. I hope that this was helpful for you. Definitely let me know in the comments below if there's anything you would like to see from me next on this channel. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.